right, good morning, Mets family. It's your boy Rasheed McDonald, and today is September 17th, 2024. And last night, the Mets took on the Washington Nationals in the first game of a three-game set, and the offense seemed to be pressing a little bit. We're going to get into the highlights in a little while, but Francisco Lindor, before the game, had some comments on his injury. Uh, I, sh I should be back. I should be back. Um, if he turns the corner quick, I could be back pretty soon. If not, then I'll be a little longer, but I should be back hopefully before the year ends. And um, um, hopefully it's it's sooner rather than later. Best case scenario, he'll be playing against the Nationals. Um, um, I don't know how realistic that is. Um, we'll see how I wake up tomorrow. So with this news, you have to believe that Francisco Lindor will be on the field for the Philly series and the Brave series. I mean, we wouldn't get to this point and we wouldn't go to this length of getting MRIs or making sure everything's clear, going out there and saying something that isn't true. I don't think that's in Lindor's character. He wouldn't go out there and say something that isn't true. He is going to try to be on the field for those two series. I think that it is wise to say, hey, let's try to survive this national series without Lindor, have him rested and healthy and ready for the Phillies and the Braves. We're going to talk a little bit more about what everything looks like in the wild card standings. Let's get to the highlights. Nationals looking to play spoiler at City Field on Monday night, and Jose Tana goes to the opposite field for the lead. One nothing Nationals, bottom four. Bases loaded for Mark Vientos, and he hits a dribbler up the third base line, and Jake Irvin makes the play to end the inning with the roar. Mark Vientos not too pleased with the results of that play as the Nationals keep the lead. Bottom eight, Tyrone Taylor hits a double to lead off the inning and get the Mets into scoring position early. Mets in business for OMG. Jose Iglesias hits it right back up the originator and he is going to be safe at first as the pitcher can't make the play. Iglesias is hype, bench is hype, Edwin Diaz on to keep the game tied at one and he strikes out Tana to keep the game tied. Bottom of the 10th. 3-1 pitch. Line left field, base hit to the corner. Marte wins it for the Mets. The Mets will win the game two to one. And tonight, Tyler McGill is on the mound. And for the Nationals, they have Mitchell Parker, who will be on the mound for them. Tyler McGill has to continue to build on what he's done the last two starts. Go out there, quality innings. Give your team the opportunity to put some offense up. I understand the offense is sluggish right now. They're pressing. Right now, they feel the pressure. It's tough this time of year to play these games against these teams that you know and you feel that you should be beating. It's not easy. All this talk about strength of schedule, I don't like it because that does not matter. These are major league baseball players. These are professional athletes they're going to go out there they're going to compete even the cubs are going to compete to make sure that they don't have the worst record of all time so don't sit there and think that these teams aren't going to compete look at the rockies last night they competed so don't sit there and think that teams aren't going to compete look at the the way jake irvin his motions, how he felt during that game. He felt that pressure. He was on the mound. He was doing his thing. The Nationals got a good thing with Jake Irvin out there. So don't sleep on that. So these are athletes. They get up to play the game. But this morning, I want to talk about something a little bit different. Let's change the tune a little bit, right? 
We're not going to talk about the Braves or the postseason right now. We're going to put a pause on that for a little bit. Because yesterday I came across a video featuring Pete Crow Armstrong. And he was talking about being traded from the Mets to the Cubs. And how he felt about that trade that happened in 2021. And in the interview, he seemed to be pressing. He was a little bit uneasy, almost unsure of how to discuss it. Maybe there was some hard feelings or something else. I'm not really too sure. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Because he was young when the trade happened. He was drafted in 2020. Got traded in 2021. And I think the morning that I got traded, I, I called my buddy. I called Vientos because I... I think we all thought he was gonna get dealt. And we were like, hey man, like call me if anything happens to you. Like, good luck, yada yada, I love you. Cause he's in Syracuse and I'm in Florida getting ready to go to, or actually I think I think it was an off day and I was getting ready to go see my parents uh, and, and my best friend. Uh, we we're gonna go fishing and whatever. And it was just, yeah, I, I, I didn't have it. I didn't have it, not on my bingo card. So I don't know how to answer this with, with so, I'll be honest with you. Mark Vientos ended up being the first person to call me. Uh, I'm in the car. I'm in the car on the way to go see my parents and my agent for lunch. And Mark and I left the conversation at call me if anything happens to you. So, he, he FaceTimes me and I'm driving. So, I was like, I'm not going to pick this up. Um, but then I was like... No, I'm gonna pick this up. Mark's Mark's out of here. This is wild, yada yada. And he answers the or I answer the phone and he's just blank stare. Didn't say a word. So I kind of reciprocate that and I don't say anything back. And I'm like, what happened? And in the background, he's in the clubhouse. I hear somebody go, P. Crow just got traded. And I'm like, oh, so this was about me. And then all of a sudden, like my phone kind of starts buzzing and. Um, I didn't, I thought it was a joke, especially when whoever said that said, said that, um, and then I called my agent right away and I was like, what in the world is, is happening? What, what are people talking about? Um, yeah. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt of being a little bit naive at the time. And maybe at the time when it happened, his actions were a little bit different, which is why it took him a little while to talk about it during that interview right so when someone gets traded it's tough and it seems like crow armstrong still feels now when he goes out there and he plays and he talks about the mets in a trade like he has to prove something you know like the mets prove the mets wrong like they made the wrong decision and i think honestly that's the wrong approach for him you know he was traded for javi Baez, a world champion one of the best shortstops in the game. Now, I understand Javi Baez's numbers isn't great this season, you know, and you can't argue with that. But you also can't argue that Javi Baez isn't one of the best shortstops of this generation. He'll forever be enshrined in the hearts of everyone in Chicago. So it should be some sort of an honor for Crow Armstrong to have been traded for Javi Baez. And I say that with the utmost respect for P. Crow Armstrong. You know, I, I think he's going to be a solid player, you know, but I want to talk about something else. If you turn on the TV and you look at how the young players of the game are being discussed, your Ellie De La Cruz, your O'Neal Cruz's, your Paul Skeens, Jackson Merrill, Jackson Churio. I've talked about these guys as well. On end, right? Like you can talk about them all day long and you can name plenty of other stars, right? That are being talked about today. But you won't hear anyone mention Mark Vientos. You can turn on YouTube, MLB Network, any channel that talks about Major League Baseball the right way. And no one's having a conversation about Vientos. Why? Because they never believed that he was going to be the type of player that he's shown to be and I'm sorry but I have to disagree and with a lot of people from the moment I saw Vientos I saw Manny Machado call me crazy that's fine I don't care honestly it's my opinion it's not yours but I always thought that he had Machado level potential with the bat 
Not even talking about his glove. Yet the name I constantly hear outside of those young stars is P. Crow Armstrong. The way people talk about him, you think he's up for rookie of the year. You think that he's among the league leaders in OPS, slugging, or some other stat where he's dominating the league. People act like you have to tune in just to watch him play every single day. I'm sorry, but I completely disagree. Crow Armstrong hasn't shown me anything to prove that he deserves that level of coverage. And again, that's with all due respect. Now don't get me wrong, I think he's a solid player. He could be a good role player. Maybe even a Brett Gardner type. If he plays his cards right, but Crow Armstrong hasn't showed me anything to suggest that he could have a Cody Bellinger type season. And I'm being fair, right? Because Cody Bellinger played center field for the Dodgers when he won the MVP. Crow Armstrong hasn't shown me anything close to that level of performance. He hasn't even shown me like that he could at least be at the level of maybe like a Christian Yelich, right? The left fielder for the Brewers. He hasn't even shown me that. So, it, you know, when we talk about Crow Armstrong, we can talk about his charisma. Does he have it? Of course. You know, and, and he has that type of attitude that grabs your attention. And he plays hard. And he can catch your eye with his effort. I mean, his effort is probably the number one thing that pops out at you when he's on the field. But when I com compare him, and I want to bring up a comparison, it's Brad Gardner. Honestly, Crow Armstrong might be better defensively than Gardner. Right? Gardner was an elite leadoff hitter. He was pesky. He was a consistent nuance offensively. Crow Armstrong hasn't shown me that, right? So, and again, with all due respect, I think once Crow Armstrong understands his role in the game, then and only then, he will cement himself where he belongs. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be talked about. If he's making flashy plays or excelling defensively, sure, talk about him. But if he, he's not moving the needle, if he's not making something significant happen on the field or an impact, then I don't think that warrants the level of discussion that we're having or that people are having on these platforms about him. And again, with all due respect. Meanwhile, Mark Vientos is having the highest slugging percentage of any third baseman with at least 250 at bats or more. Over the last three plus months, he's been one of the best third basemen in baseball. Right up there with the likes of Manny Machado and Arenado. You know, I I'm going to campaign for Mark Vientos until people start having some respect for him and putting some respect on his name. And this is going to go through the offseason, the postseason, whenever. Whenever the Mets are on the screen and you staring at a screen and you watching something that comes to the Mets and you see my face on it, you're going to hear from me and you're going to hear about Mark Vientos every single time. Because the kid deserves it, right? Because we can't be having conversation about the Martian, right? When the Martian hasn't even had a real cup of coffee in the big leagues yet. I mean, come on. He doesn't even have a pot to piss in at this level. And we're acting like he's the next Mike Trout. Anthony Volpe gets more attention, more conversation than Vientos, right? They put a whole thing up. Right when he made his debut for the Yankees about him and the Derek Jeter connection, like if he was some Hall of Famer in the making. Yet Mark Vientos has put up these numbers and no whiff of a conversation of him being put up there with your Gunnar Hendersons, with your Jackson Holidays. None of that. I bet you maybe even Drew Jones gets more talk. And he has he's not even up in the major leagues yet. No matter what you thought of him before, look at the numbers he's putting up. He's on track to win a silver slugger at third base. It's time to start including Vantos in the conversation. If you don't want to, fine. But numbers never lie. Period. So you don't need me to tell you that. But we're going to keep talking about this as the season goes on again into the offseason. And whenever you see me, we're going to talk about Mark Vientos because he deserves it. You already know the vibes. Let's go Mets.